Well, good morning, everyone who is joining us online and those of you who are here in the prayer room this morning. We're so glad you're joining us. Let's all stand together if you're here in the room and maybe even just for a moment if you're at home. I know that it's a little easier to get cozy and kind of settled in, but let's just stand to our feet in the presence of the Lord this morning, even as we begin. And, uh, and then we can position ourselves to absorb and just put our focus and our delight upon him. I think there's something powerful, though, just about shutting off all the other voices, all the other distractions, and actually calling our body, soul, and spirit to full attention. The Bible says that, I think it's 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, I wish that the Lord would sanctify you completely, body, soul, and spirit. We're supposed to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So your spirit is alive, but it's time to call our physical body, our mind, our will into focus this morning. And we're going to be focusing and really praying through scriptures that are all about beholding the Lord. I believe that there's a principle that many Christians have missed, especially in a very distracted culture, and it's the principle of beholding. See, I believe with all of my heart that whatever we behold, we become. We become like whatever we behold. Beholding is more than just seeing. It's actually bringing our focus in and gazing and studying and meditating and looking at different angles and different nuances and just staying in that position and that posture for a period of time until we begin to be affected by it. You might behold a piece of art. You might behold an individual, but the Bible calls us to behold the Lord and realize that part of the Holy Spirit's work in our life is that as we sit in the place of prayer, as we soak in environments and atmospheres of worship and the anointing, it actually changes us. Psalm 119, verse number 18, David writes, he said, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. For I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. David's talking about beholding the Lord by studying the scriptures and looking into the word. And there's other places that we'll pray here in a little bit that talks about beholding him in his tabernacle or in his holy place, his house. And this morning, I want you to grab this idea and maybe it's, it's a catchy phrase. It's not original with me at all, but it's something that has stuck with me and I want it to stick with you. And it's this, that we become like that which we behold. So ask ourselves the question, if, if, if I'm becoming what I behold, what am I spending the majority of my life beholding? And we're called to be people that behold the presence of the Lord. And that's why prayer and worship and environments of praise and adoration and meditation is so important because it shapes us. Let's go before the Lord this morning, wherever you're at. And Lord, today, we put our eyes upon you. We hear the words of John the Baptist, even in John 1.19, where he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, what was it about John the Baptist that in the crowd of people who were being baptized and listening to even this prophet, that he was able to see you in a way that nobody else saw you and see your calling and your mercy and your tenderness and your mission, your desires for him, that you would be the spotless lamb of God. Lord, we want to see you beyond the veneer. We want to see you beyond the external. We want to see you beyond even the useful. We want to gaze upon you and behold you in your scriptures, in your word, and in your beauty of your manifest presence. So wherever we're at, in our living room, office, church, maybe going for a walk right now and you're listening to this or here with us, as many are in this prayer room, worshiping and beholding. Lord, we give you our full attention. 
our full focus, Lord, you will not be left to our peripheral vision and to our peripheral focus. Lord, our eyes are set on you to behold you. Let's worship the Lord. I'm going to come back and we're going to pray together. Fix our eyes on you. Now. Yeah. We fix our eyes on you. All across the room and online, let's just take a moment to just behold him, picture him, the resurrected Jesus. Hair white like wool, eyes blazing with burning fire, feet like burnished bronze, a golden sash around his chest. 
beautiful, Jesus. Beautiful, Jesus. You're beautiful, Jesus. We love you. We bless you.
feel like there is a grace to behold him right now. I feel like there's a grace to proclaim that he's holy. And to see him really as he is. Jesus, we just want to behold you. We just want to see you really as you are. We don't just want to sing about you, Lord. But we really want to see you. You're opening up our eyes to see you rightly, God. You're opening up our eyes to see you rightly, God. Oh, give us eyes to see you. Oh, give us hearts to know you. eyes to see you and give us hearts to know you as you really are in the beauty and the splendor of God oh, we celebrate who you are we celebrate who you are we celebrate who you are Celebrate who you are. We celebrate who you are. Oh, let us see you rightly. Let us see you clearly, God. We want to see you, Lord. We celebrate who you are. We celebrate who you are. eyes to see, give us hearts to know you, really as you are, Jesus. There's no one like you in the heavens or on the earth. See 
Jesus, you're beautiful. I'm gazing at you. I'm gazing at you. You still my soul. I know that he is God. still my soul and know that he is Lord be still my soul and know that he is God be still so know that he is Lord. I relinquish control. I put you in your rightful place, God, today. Oh, I make you Lord. You're the one who holds the world in the palm of your hand. Acquainted with my grief, you know me, you see me, and still you reign above it.
the spirit of repentance forgive us for loving ourselves forgive us for loving entertainment more than you God forgive us for being fascinated with other things but you God Forgive us for putting other things on the throne. Forgive us for putting other things in front of you, Jesus. I want the Lord only, always. I want the Lord only, always. I want the Lord. Jesus, we put you on the throne right now. We repent for loving ourselves. Lord, we repent for putting things before you. Let us be fascinated with you only. Let us be fascinated with you only. And I want the Lord only, always. I want the Lord only, always i want the lord only always i want the lord and i want the lord only always i want the lord only always i want the lord only always i want the lord I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. Only, always. I want you, Lord. Only, always. I want you, Lord. Only, always. I want you, Lord. And I want you, Lord. Only, always. I want seraphim around your throne who never cease to cry out holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty the whole earth is full of his glory Lord you're holy you're holy there is no one like you no one that compares to you no one that can stand next to you, no one that can be measured in the same scale, weight of glory, God. You're holy. Fill us with a sense of fascination and awe and reverence at your holiness, God. That familiarity would burn away that religious characters of who you are would melt away. We would see you as you really are, like Isaiah saw you, high and lifted up. Return a spirit of the fear of the Lord to the church. 
Lord, that we might fear you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Lord, we need a holy reverence for you and for your presence once again. Your presence that will not be packaged, your presence that will not be contained, it will not be decorated. Lord, you are holy. When we see you like that, what it could steal our attention. The antidote to distraction is a revelation of your holiness. Give us a revelation today, Lord, afresh and anew as you are already downloading it into our hearts just of the beauty, of the glory, the majesty of him who sits on the throne, of the one who sits on the throne, exalted, on high, Jesus, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold he who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be glory and honor and power and majesty and dominion and might forever and ever. To the one who's on the throne, just even where you're at, just pray that, Lord. To the one who sits on the throne, Jesus, you sit on the throne. on the throne be glory honor and power forever to the one who sits on the throne be glory honor and power forever to the one who sits on the throne be glory honor and power forever to the sits on the throne be glory and honor and power forever to the one who sits on the throne be glory and honor and power forever to the one who sits on the throne be glory and honor on the throne be glory and honor and power forever to the one who sits on the throne
one whose feet are surrounded by crowns of gold that have been laid there by kings and rulers and elders. Worthy are you, Jesus. Worthy. Lord, we behold you this morning. We behold your throne room. We behold your throne. We behold your beauty, your glory. David said in Psalm 27, one thing I have desired, that one thing will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold his beauty. To gaze upon him. To choir in his temple. Lord, we gaze upon, we behold the beauty of the Lord. What David saw, we see today. And Lord, you're good. Lord, that you're powerful. Father, that you're merciful. Jesus, we behold the nail scars in your hands. That forever and ever, even in your resurrected, glorified state, your eternal state, you will forever and ever bear those not as marks of shame or defeat. But as wounds of love, signs of great victory, the ultimate victory. Lord, we gaze upon the nail scars that set us free. We gaze upon the place where your blood flowed, the crimson river of our salvation flowed. What the world looks at as shame, we look at as beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus. Your eyes that burn like fire. Zeal for the house of the Lord. Zeal to do the will of your Father. We see the fire of joy burning in your eyes even as you look at us because it was the same fire of joy that burned in your eyes while you hung on the cross. And it was for the joy that was set before you that you endured the cross and bore the shame, our shame. That same joy is still burning in your eyes, Jesus. The same love that burned in your eyes, the ravished fire of a bridegroom for his bride, even as you look at your church, with all of her imperfections, with all of the wrinkles, with all the stains, with all of the stumbling and the falling and the corruption and the things that have marred your bride. Lord, you still look upon your bride, the church, with love because you see not who we used to be, but who we are becoming as we behold you. You're perfecting your church. You're beautifying your church. You're washing your church with the water of your word and with the glory of your presence. And you said in Ephesians 5 that when you come back, you're coming back for a glorious church without any spot, without any stain or wrinkle or any such thing. A mature bridegroom who is ready to meet her bridegroom. Lord, we see the love burning in your eyes. We hear the authority in your voice, Jesus, like the sound of many waters, rushing waterfalls from heaven that wash over us and change us. We behold you, Lamb of God. We behold you, Son of God. Beautiful, exalted,
And Lord, we pray that 2 Corinthians 3 would become a reality in each of our lives and in your church, which says all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Lord, as we behold you, as we give our lives to meditate upon you, to worship you, to adore you, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you would transform us, that we would be transformed in your presence from glory to glory, God. Lord, that we would not just stay static. Lord, that we would not be marinated in this world and take on the spirit of this world and its characteristics, but Lord, that we would take on your heart, that we would take on your ways, that our heart would be a tablet of flesh upon which Holy Spirit can write the law of God, not just on tablets of stone of religious observation and external observance, but Lord, we want it deep in us. The glory of God deep in us. The word of God deep in the very fiber of who we are. Transformed by your glory in the presence of God. Even as we behold you, Jesus. Lord, make us people of beholding. That the one thing that is most fascinating to us isn't on a television screen or on our phone. It's not a person across the street or across the world, but it's you, the enthroned one. Keep our hearts at home in your throne room. Transform us from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Amen, Lord, that's our prayer. And we pray that over you today, that you would be a person that beholds his glory, that you would not be distracted from the one thing. He's calling you. He loves you. He's for you. And he's inviting us to behold him. I'm so grateful that you joined us this morning. What a beautiful and sweet presence, powerful presence of the holiness of God this morning. Let it just saturate your home, your heart for the rest of the day. Come and join us at noon today tonight at 6 30 here in the prayer room we would love for you to come otherwise we'll see you tomorrow morning god bless you